Can I, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, wonderful. So um, let me start off with I'm Elizabeth Hewlett, Chair of the Prince George's County Planning Board of the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission. Um, and first I'm going to start off with um, Happy Hispanic Heritage Month because we're still in the middle of um, Hispanic Heritage Month, which will continue through October the 15th. But I want to take a moment to welcome everyone to our annual budget forum. Um, in the past years, we have had the pleasure of greeting you one person at a time or in person at the Commission's auditoriums located in different regions of our county. But things have changed. And as I look at our budget flyer that you see depicted on the screen there um, from prior years, I see a retiree, a Commission retiree. I see some current Commission employees from the Planning Department and from the Department of Parks and Recreation. And I see two stalwarts who have come to countless hearings over the decades. And I want to give a shout out to them because they have been real troopers for their respective communities. Um, Earl Gums, seated, um, who has been fighting for his swimming pool for years and years and years in Hillcrest Heights. And then there's June White Dillett, who is standing with the uh, microphone. So we want to keep them both in our thoughts today. Um, so we cannot proceed in person this year, as you know, due to the COVID-19 pan um, pandemic. So this fall, both of our annual budget forums will be held via virtual meeting platforms. And during these challenging times, we, the Commission, and the Prince George's County Planning Board remain committed to promoting a very safe environment for our public our stakeholders and our staff while creating dynamic experiences, deliberating, delivering innovative and exciting programs, maintaining marvelous facilities, parks, and trails that have earned our agency six, count them, six national gold medals for excellence in parks and recreation management. But of course, these awards represent the collaborative efforts of our elected officials, along with our amazing staff and our fabulous volunteers, but most of all you, our wonderful residents, our citizens, and our community partners. Let me say quite unabashedly, we are Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission proud. We are Prince George's County proud. We are Prince George's proud. We are proud to be stewards of our historic and natural resources. We are proud to provide an array of exciting, innovative, recreational programs for healthy lifestyles. We are proud to provide sound land use planning and development in line with the laws enacted by our legislative body and interpreted by our courts. We are proud to serve the 900,000 plus residents and visitors to our county. And we are proud to be counted in the 2020 decennial census. We and to bring, and we're proud for, um, and we hope each one of you is proud to be counted as well. And we are proud to bring in federal funds to Prince George's County. The census deadline was um, shortened to be 9:30, September 30th, 2020. Today is September 29th. That means, or did mean, that we had one day left. There was a federal court ruling, and while we're getting some more information on the federal court ruling, the U.S. Census Bureau has extended the deadline for six more days. So we have six more days to get your census done. Don't wait till that sixth day. Do it now. Um, you can call, text, encourage your friends. It only takes 10 minutes. You can do my2020census.gov or call the number depicted on your screen. And it's just so easy and it's so important to bring money to your communities. Now, through your testimony today, we will, build, we will continue to build on our award-winning programs, support our community's growth towards economic development, and plan for future generations. To begin tonight's forum, I'm, going, I'm pleased to introduce our colleagues on the Prince George's County Planning Board. So I see Vice Chair Dorothy Bailey. You can wave so everyone sees who you are. Um, um, Commissioner Will Dorner. And Commissioner Manny Giraldo. Hello, everybody. 
and Commissioner Shawnee Washington, who will be joining us momentarily, probably by the time I finish these remarks. Please note that this meeting is being video recorded and will be archived on the Planning Board's website, pgplanningboard.org. This evening, we are soliciting your ideas on what you would like to see placed in our fiscal 2022 operating budget for the Commission's Department of Parks and Recreation and the Prince George's County um, Planning Department. Prior to your testimonies tonight, we will give you a brief overview of the budget process, which will be, include the operating budget, how expenditures are allocated, the overall budget process timeline, and we will touch briefly on the capital improvement program. It is imperative to note that capital improvement projects are initially approved by the Prince George's County Council for only the first year of a long-term planning cycle, and that the actual funding for these projects may or may not be approved by the Council in future years. Sometimes they go forward and sometimes projects are removed or sometimes they are delayed to outer years. So in addition to the request you bring before us tonight, I am sure you are aware of the many needs of Prince George's County residents, especially in this current environment. We are, have to work with schools, emergency services, and so much more, public safety, so much more. So as always, we continue to work diligently and closely with our county partners to balance community needs with fiscal realities. Community needs and desires with fiscal realities and address significant infrastructure improvement needs as well. We also remind you that you need not wait for these annual forums to express your concerns or requests of a more minor nature such as maintenance at our facilities. These matters may and should be handled by our staff all throughout the year. You may simply call the Department of Parks and Recreation Help Desk at 301-699-2255, 301-699-2255, or you can send an email to customerservice at pgparks.com, customer.service at pgparks.com, you can call our office, my office, at 301-952-3560 or contact us through our website, pgplanningboard.com, to express your concerns. Um, we sincerely appreciate the fact that you have taken time to join us this evening and share your thoughts with us, and we thank you for your ongoing advice, support, and partnership. So we have several key members from our planning and parks and recreation departments listening this evening and who will make note of your concern. They should be visible on the screen. I, we're going to make, make that happen. But um, we have our uh, Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission Executive Director, Asantha Chang-Smith. Can we see her? We have our Corporate Budget Director, John Kroll. We have our Planning Director, Andre Green Sheckley. So you, we should log on, folks, so everyone can see you. Um, we have our acting di deputy director of planning, Derek Berlage. I see him. Let everyone see you. Um, we have our director for the Department of Parks and Recreation, Bill Tyler. I think this is his first budget um, forum for this side of the commission in his new capacity. Um, we have deputy director for facility operations, Steve Carter. We have Acting Deputy Director for Administration and Development, Alvin McNeil. Acting Deputy Director for Area Operations, Wanda Ramos. And we have our Chief of the Park Police, Stanley Johnson. Now, I know Stanley Johnson may or may not be on right now because we were both finishing up a 6 o'clock um, forum. So he may or may not be on. However, I do need to acknowledge that he is receiving the Purple Light Award this week from Sheriff High for his efforts and for the efforts of our outstanding Park Police um, Department Division in Prince George's County for their efforts in shattering the silence and stamping out domestic violence. So we need to give a round of applause to Chief Johnson. Thank you. They've worked so very, very hard, the whole department, and, and year in and year out. 
Um, and it's, it's just fabulous. And it is essential that we eradicate domestic uh, violence and bullying. And, um, and to, it's just critical. So we thank them for this. So now for our participation guidelines. Registered speakers connected through a computer, tablet, or smartphone should join this meeting via the link provided in email from the Planning Board office. Online registered participants may be prompted to install GoToMeeting software in order to participate. Registered speakers may also listen or participate in the meeting using a phone line um, and the call-in number provided via the email. We ask each and every participant to mute your phones when not speaking. Please do not put your phone on hold. Um, this evening, our forum will follow this format. We'll hear a brief overview of the Commission's budget process in Prince George's County from our Corporate Budget Director, John Kroll, and then we will hear from you. We ask you to limit your remarks to three minutes and 30 seconds before your time is up, a yellow light will appear on the time clock. I hope you all can see the time clock. Um, this is a signal for your uh, comments to close. A red light will chime and signal that when your time is up, so please conclude your comments at this time. However, if you have so much more to say, uh, we will accept written comments until the close of business on Tuesday, October 27th, 2020. You have lots of time to get additional comments in. So um, the written comments should be submitted to me via email, fax, um, or mail uh, uh, at the address as shown on the screen. Um, so without, without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce our Corporate Budget Director, John Kroll, to deliver his PowerPoint presentation. Thank you. Thank you and good evening. Good evening. Uh, welcome to the first of two budget forums for the uh, Prince George's uh, County side of the, plan of the um, Park and Planning Commission. Uh, next slide, please. We, as as uh, Chair Hewlett mentioned earlier, we are the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission. We're a five-county agency that's Prince George's and Montgomery counties. Planning Board, who you've been introduced to, oversees the Department of Parks and Recreation and the Planning Department. We serve all the residents and visitors of Prince George's County since 2006. That population of citizens has grown by about 74,000 people. We're upwards of 900,000 now in the county. Slide four, please. Services that we provide are managed physical growth and planning communities. We protect and steward natural, cultural, and historic resources. We provide leisure and recreational experiences. We maintain natural areas and parks throughout the county. These locations offer residents opportunities to recreate and enjoy the open space and natural resources. And as Chip Hewlett mentioned earlier, we are the proud recipient of six-time National Gold Medal Awards uh, for Park and Recreation Management. Next slide, please. There we go. Property taxes make up 84% of the revenue that pays for these services. The property tax rate is currently set at 29.4 cents per hundred for real property. And those rates have not changed since 2016. They bring in a total uh, in fiscal year 21 revenue of $367 million. Slide six, please. This costs the average homeowner about $968 a year in property taxes for all the services delivered by the commission. That's approximately $2.65 a day. Slide seven, please. Let's sit and look at this slide for a few moments. This is what your investment brings to you. We have facilities ranging from an airport to community centers, to archery ranges, to playgrounds, athletic fields, tennis courts, miles of trails, golf courses, cricket fields, and all the other items shown here on this graphic. Quite impressive array of services that are provided to the citizens of Prince George's. Slide eight, please. 
for fiscal year 21, the year that we're in currently, about $365 million expenditure budget. Most of that budget, about 77%, is spent on park and recreation services. Slide nine, please. This is a quick look at the current approved capital improvements program. It's a six year program. As Chair Hewlett mentioned earlier, only the first year, fiscal year 21, is currently funded. It's funded this year at about $73.4 million. The total six year approved plan, though unfunded, is for about $255 million. Includes uh, the categories of acquisition, aquatics, historical facilities, the renovation of facilities and the renovation of park and playgrounds and fields, stormwater projects, trails, and some new construction. Slide 10, please. The budget cycle began this last July. It continues this evening and in a couple weeks at the public budget forums. We accepted initial guidance from the county's spending affordability committee in the end of August. We'll gain further guidance from the planning board as our budgets are developed and presented to them in October and November. We'll touch base with the spending affordability committee again in December. At the commission meeting in December, the commission will adopt the proposed budget for fiscal year 22. We'll publish that book, those budgets and submit them to the county council and the county executive on January 15th. County will proceed to hold hearings and we'll meet with the county uh, staff and then with the county uh, council uh, in April and May. In May, there's a joint council meeting for the commission wide items. Then in the uh, end of May, the budget will be adopted by the county council. And then in June, the commission will have their final adoption of the overall uh, by county budget. And as noted here in the left corner, the fiscal year is July 1 to June 30. Uh, slide 11, please. Budget picture going forward. The property values have continued to recover from the um, downward trend that they uh, had prior to uh, 2010. They've grown. 2022 is projected to increase by an additional 3%. This graph shows the assessed the change year over year of assessed property values, which is what the property tax is based on. Slide 12, please. This is the graph of the property tax revenue from fiscal year 13 to fiscal year 21, the current year for the three tax supported funds, the administration fund, park fund, and the recreation fund. From the peak in 2010 through 2014, we lost about $56 million in revenues annually due to the housing market collapse. Since that time, we have been in a modest recovery and we've continued to grow and we have surpassed those old highs and we're continuing to uh, do well in the property tax revenue picture. Slide 13, please. Property tax revenue is proposed, is projected right now to increase by $8.3 million or 2.7% for fiscal year 22. Major costs are projected to decrease by about 2.2 million, primarily due to a decrease, a projected decrease in CIP uh, PAYGO. Now keep in mind that this graph shows on the right column, the uh, red bar, only preliminary fixed costs are shown here. Critical needs and pandemic related adjustments have not yet been developed. Well, those will be developed as we move forward in the budget and Obviously, the expense uh, side of this will change at that point as the budget is developed. Slide 14, please. Budget strategy going forward. Assuming the property value projections are realized, we're projected to be in very good fiscal shape through fiscal year 27. The challenges for this coming year are continuing to address 
infrastructure improvement needs in our facility utilizing PAYGO in both the park and recreation funds. We continue to develop innovative programming offerings that meet the needs of all county residents in the post-COVID-19 environment. We continue to implement a six-year planning work program, primarily focusing on plans, studies, and priority implementation activities that are consistent with Plan 2035 recommendations. And we propose it, and we would be proposing adjustments to reflect expected operational and service provision changes due to the pandemic effects, all while responsibly planning for the future, balancing community needs with fiscal reality. Last slide, please. The Park and Planning Commission is committed to building strong, healthy, sustainable communities. With your help and input, we'll continue to do so. Thank you in advance for participating in tonight's forum. Thank you so much, Mr. Kroll. Um, as you can see, it's a, it's a tough process, but we are endeavoring to do all that we can within our means in this um, balancing competing interests, particularly in this very challenging climate. So without further ado, we're going to go to the um, testimony portion of tonight's budget forum. Um, normally we would start with the elected officials, um, and I do see we have, um, um, well, Belinda Queen is on representing the Wilburn community, and we're going to go in the order in which people have signed up. So um, Belinda Queen? And if you give us a moment to find your name, unless you're using a telephone number. Okay. Do we not see her name? Could you check the names? Mm -hmm. You checked everybody so she's on? No, I didn't see her come on there. Just, yeah, oh. just missing. Okay, so we're going to um, go ahead and move to Chuck Perry. Just Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, I just wanted to uh, make some commentary on the, um, the public safety budget. Um, in light of the recent uh, verdict for settlement, I think that public safety needs to be reimagined. I think that um, we need to really think about diverting some of the money away from public safety, primarily the police budget, and to other areas that would actually shore up our economy and uh, give more opportunity, economic opportunity, to some of the people who are experiencing economic difficulties during this time of COVID-19. Uh, that, that's my that's the essence of my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Perry. Um, uh, Yuri Borofsky. Um, thank you. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Are, oh, are you, you so are much. you logged in or just by phone? I, I'm using a laptop. Okay. Thank you. I could probably do a video as well if that's helpful. I'm not sure I can. Um, well, my timer is well, up, you don't have, so I'll go ahead. start. Okay. We're good. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, just a computer problem. Uh, all right. I think I'm yeah. Um, well, thank you for having us uh, in this uh, online forum. I, I really appreciate it. I mean, what a time, right? I mean, we're doing this from our homes and not from a computer center. And um, but you know what's what's you know while you have all these community centers that have been closed for the better part of this year, the uh, park service um, options that were open are outdoors and parks and trails and things that we can do outside and. Um, I noticed that in your budget you have only three and a half percent allocated towards um, trails in the capital improvements um, budget, and um, certainly trails are cheap and much cheaper than rec facilities, so you don't really have to allocate as much money to maintain the same level of service. But uh, with view that the facilities are closed for the better part of the year, and uh, we don't know how this pandemic is going to play out, um, we are all hoping it's not going to last, but. We don't know. We don't know what the future is going to hold for us. So I'd really like to encourage you to allocate more funding for trails. Specifically, I'd like to mention the Capital Trails Coalition. Fantastic efforts towards uh, building up a regional trail network. And uh, while Prince George's County has the most mileage planned of any neighboring jurisdiction, 
we are certainly not even close to the amount of miles we have right now. And again, looking at the budget, I am not sure we're, we're getting there. And uh, just let me repeat the word network. It's very important that the communities have access to the trails and through the trails to the parks. Your mission states that you're committed to building strong, healthy, sustainable communities. But uh, if a member of a community needs to get in an SUV to drive to a park or a trail, well, that's already not a very productive way to start that healthy um, outdoor experience. We need to have a network that connects all communities. On a different subject, uh, last year at this time, we've congratulated your staff for passing FAA drone certification, which is a big achievement. Also last year, I mentioned that we should consider allowing drones in a park. Uh, and really, there is no funding attached to it. It's just something that uh, you guys need to put together, think about it, and with view that we have an FAA regulations for the most part of the region, there would be very few parks where you could consider letting drones uh, fly. And frankly, Fairfax County have done it. I hate pointing fingers at Virginia, but they have more bike trails. They allow drones in a park. They're definitely leading the STEM game uh, for their community. Uh, last but not least, I'd like to highlight uh, the current conditions at the uh, Summerfield Park. It's frankly uh, a very disappointing experience. Cracked pavement, litter, dumping, missing safety fences, peeling paint all over the boardwalk. I certainly understand that this park mostly serves affordable housing community here, people who are renters and not property owners, but we should offer equitable access to parks to everyone. I also understand there is a complex arrangement with the Summerfield Housing LTD partnership, but I think the MNCPPC should really step up uh, their game in this particular park and at the Summerfield uh, uh, Park. And just last but not least, 265 a day, that's really not a lot of money in the grand scheme of life, but frankly, that's more than my electric bill, and I have to admit, I don't think I'm getting even nearby the same value oh. from, from the public parks. So please, more bike trails, okay. drones at a park, and let's clean up Summerfield okay. Park. Thank, Thank you. you. I, look, I gave you a little extra time because I had cut into your initial time. And um, yes, we went, and I also want you to look at those numbers, um, those phone numbers. Um, and we will, we will get your number. We're not going to um, put it out on the airways, but we'll get your email address or, and get it to our Department of Parks and Recreation so they can reach out to you about because some of what you said in terms of the maintenance is one of the things that we can handle throughout the year, not just you know at the budget form. And um, the the. The two dollars and sixty-five cents are not just for parks, but but they're for our wonderful programs, our historic sites, and so many other things. But I'm sure our Department of Parks and Recreation will fill you in on that as well. But we do thank you for your testimony, and we'll see how many of those things we can address immediately. Thank you, Mr. Carrington. Are you on, Daryl Carrington? Yes, I am, Madam Chair. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Carrington. Hello, good evening, and thank you very much, and to all the members of the planning board, thank you very much for having this forum this evening. I'm Daryl Carrington. Uh, my remarks are just very brief. I just hope that we can support some of our existing amenities in the county that promote open space and uh, promote environmental stewardship. Uh, I think these, um, as as a previous person was saying, as we uh, experience the, the COVID pandemic and still going through it, our parks and, and recreational activities were some of the very few things that we can do. So, you know, I applaud all of you for your efforts and in, in keeping um, our park at Planet Harbor being award winning and uh, all the fantastic work that you do. Um, again, I just hope that we can make sure that we focus on supporting our existing resources that we have um, in the county. Thank you all for your time and I hope you and your family stay safe during this pandemic. Thank you, Mr. Carrington. Uh, we appreciate it. Lori Picard. Uh, hi there. Um, Hello. Hi. Uh, so I've never spoken at one of these meetings before. Um, I uh, I moved to uh, Prince George's County about a year ago. Um, I've loved living here so far, and I've just been blown away by the caliber of the resources that are available to residents. Um, you know, I love the sports and learning complex. I'm using the trails. I'm taking my kids to the playgrounds, the pools. Like it's just it's phenomenal. I've just been blown away by it. Um, but I would say the one, I guess, the one thing I would really like to see put in place and the reason that I'm at this meeting this evening is that um, I, I love to ride my bike. I love the network of trails, especially the Anacostia Riverwalk Trail. But I live in Cheverly, and there's no way for me to get from Cheverly by bike to any of those wonderful trails. 
um, that requires getting in a car and it's, it's sort of a big production. And, and I know that there are others for whom that's not even a possibility. Um, I'd love to be able to commute by bicycle once we're able to go back to work um, in person. So I would, I, I understand that there is a way that with a trail improvement of two or 300 feet that cyclists could connect from Chevrolet to the Chevrolet Industrial Park and then by surface roads to Kenilworth Avenue um, at Lydell. Um, so I'm hopeful that with that kind of small improvement that we could maybe have access from my home in Chevrolet to the trails. Um, and, and it's also my understanding that Kenilworth Avenue, I, I've never attempted to ride on it by a bicycle. It's just too frightening. Um, but if there were a bike lane, that maybe we could also, that, that could be the connector along with that trail improvement. Um, so thank you for your consideration. And uh, I'm just thrilled to be here and, and thrilled to be in Chevrolet. And thanks for all the great work that you do. Um, thank you, Ms. Picard. Um, one of our Department of Recreation folks may um, reach out to you to talk about the, the, the small area of improvement. If we can do that, not sure, but we can reach out to you. But I do want to say welcome to Prince George's County, and you picked a very nice um, town of Chevrolet, so that's lovely. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Um, Megan Rule. And I think Chevrolet is big time represented today. Megan rules not on. Okay. Um, Daniel Daughtry Weiss. We're going we're scrolling down the list of people who have logged in. So we don't see you. Okay. All right. Both of them are from Chevrolet though, Miss Picard. They would they would be um, your um, neighbors. Um, Stephen Schwark. No, okay. Um, Jonathan Caballero. There we are. Okay. Hi, good evening. Can you guys? Uh, we hear you. Hear me? Yes, indeed. Thank you. We see you. Hey, how's everyone doing? Uh, good evening uh, to everyone in the planning board. My name is Jonathan Caballero, and I'm here as a representative of uh, Northern Gateway CDC. Um, I'm here to say that the uh, Northern Gateway CDC is very thankful um, to have received the funding and support from the PAMC for our wayfinding and placemaking projects in the unincorporated areas of District 2, um, the Northern Gateway area. And uh, we've been able to design branding uh, for a Northern Gateway based on community input uh, to, create, to say, uh, create a sense of unity um, and a better environment for the families of the Northern Gateway. Um, we strongly believe that creating places that promote people's health, a uh, sense of community and well-being are you know, a foundation to sustainable and prosperous um, communities. Um, fortunately, this area was hit uh, really hard by the pandemic, um, health and financial-wise. Uh, this has been great part due to the area having some of the most uh, vulnerable communities. For example, many residents in the area are facing unemployment, just like the rest of the country. Um, however, a significant portion of them do not have any support from the CARES Act or even to collect unemployment. So due to the circumstances, the CDC's efforts have prioritized helping the hardest hit residents, uh, making sure they are counted in the census as well to log down the resources that the community desperately needs and deserves. Um, to this day, we have been able to organize distribution of over 500 book bags and approximately 550 bags of food uh, using the Langley Park Community Center, um, which should be also a huge priority, you know, for the budget because it serves so many people in the community. Um, as such, we hope to continue to work with the MNC PPC and have their support in the future to make sure that the unincorporated neighborhoods of the of District Two. Um, are neglected and can enjoy the same benefits uh, of well-maintained parks and functional facilities as the residents of other communities. Um, as a resident of Langley Park, uh, I would like to say that the MNCPP space and trails, um, from my experience, are well-maintained and safe. Um, but there still seems to be a few areas that suffer from excessive littering and lack of lighting. Um, I live in Langley Park, so the Quebec Street entrance to the Northwest Branch Trail seems to be in rough shape um, compared to the rest of the trail, so I'm just hopeful that 
you guys can find a long-term solution to that problem, maybe like trash bins or schedule or keep. Because uh, it has been kind of critical too uh, during these times where a lot of people work from home and sometimes you just want to uh, make use of those trails as well. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, thank you, Mr. Caballero. Um, and thank you for really promoting the census because that's going to bring federal monies into the community, and it's and it's so needed in terms of SNAP and WIC and so, and and veterans benefits yeah. and so many other benefits. So thank you for that as well. And but I'm still going to ask someone. Um, I know our we have our director of parks and recreation and our deputies on the line, and they will have someone reach out to you. We will get them your information so they can reach out to you about the the areas that need maintenance, the small areas that need maintenance, because you said the rest of it is pretty well maintained. And also to let you know Absolutely. where we have our grab and go lunches, because we're still doing that too. In addition to the oh, okay. book bags and things that you're doing, there are grab and go lunches that we're holding most days of the week. So um, we'll make sure that That's you awesome. have that information as well. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you very much. Now um, that really concludes our list. I'm going to go over the names I called earlier, just who did not respond, just to make sure. And that would be Miss Belinda Queen. Okay. Um, okay. And then we had Megan Rule. Okay, no Megan Rule. Okay. Daniel Jartree Weiss. Okay. And um, Stephen Schwark. Um, okay, so th they weren't on, but you know, hopefully the, if this is being recorded, they can watch and they can submit something in writing, and plus we have the, the next hearing coming up. So without further ado, I just want to say that concludes our public comments for the forum. We thank each of you for logging on remotely this evening to provide your uh, remarks and suggestions on the Commission's budget for FY22. And as a reminder, you have until the close of business, Tuesday, October 27th, 2020 to send your written comments by mail, fax, or email. Um, we earnestly appreciate your flexibility, your cooperation, and your support as we continue to keep our planning, our parks and recreation functions moving forward in a safe fashion during this new normal. Um, look, we know these are very, very tough times, so we ask that you make every effort to stay safe, to look out for one another, to stay strong, to stay resilient, and remain ever hopeful as we strive to get through these challenging times, including our budget, these challenging times together. So we thank you and enjoy the rest of your evening.